if Uber or Lyft don't get their way in a state, right, they resort to the fear marketing. So Uber warns, right, there's a warning. Oh, we warn you. Customers and drivers, watch out that it may leave Minnesota over proposed legislation. Leave, Uber, leave. You constantly make these threats. They're all bluffs. You never, ever end up leaving. You've done these threats in Europe. You've done these threats in California. You've done these threats in multiple states. They mean nothing. Drivers and customers ignore their threats, right? It's just uh, clouds. It's like fluffy, puffy little clouds. They mean absolutely zippo, zero, nada, niet in Russian, nichts in German, absolute nux in Dutch, nothing. It means nothing. All these little, little, little threats. We warn you, right? They think like you're like a school child or something, right? And I, I mean, I look like a little schoolboy right now. Do, 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 do. Anyway, so this is a topic that I 100% uh, I'm completely in alignment with Sergio here. Sergio and I talk about this a lot. The way to move things forward state by state or city by city is getting the legislators involved, right? Introducing the bills, right? So if they don't want to listen, you work the political angles in the numbers, get the signatures, introduce the bills and force change. They have done it in Washington. They are now proposing the bill in Minnesota and it goes on and on and on. Now, the only state where I see that Uber had a massive, massive victory and is completely shafting the drivers and bending them over is in California. Because why? They spent $220 million with their little buddies Lyft and DoorDash on these bills. A lot of fear marketing. California citizens fell for it. Drivers fell for it and they're paying the price. So did, never ever fear the little subtle threats from Dara Kosha, Shawi, Tony West and their crew. So Uber is making a last ditch effort to kill legislation. Here it is, legislation. Again, Sergio and I talk about this weekly. Let's change the legislation week by week. Shout out to his clothing brand. Um, so Uber is making a last ditch effort to kill legislation on its way to becoming law in Minnesota, which the company says could cause it to shut down operations in the state completely. In emails to drivers and customers on Monday night, Uber said the legislation would threaten passengers safety, drivers earnings potential and the ability of the company to continue operating in the state. Including the email included in the emails were links to email state lawmakers and urged them to oppose the bill. Lyft sent a similar email to riders in April. So what you are doing to get what you want with the legislators, they just flip the coin and do the opposite, right? They say, hey, don't buy into this. Go to the legislators that you have already approached to try and push these new laws through and take a complete turn, right? Don't vote for it. So this just shows you how afraid they are, right? How and, and how effective drivers are becoming state by state by getting legislators on board, by getting in there and changing leg legislation, by introducing bills that have great, great hybrid solutions, right? Hybrid solutions where you get the benefits sort of from both sides, independent contractor benefits and certain employer, uh, employee benefits, right? And, 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 and to try and push something through that's just based completely on an employer-employee model, it's not going to work. And then that's why that type of legislation will never make it through. But if you take uh, what independent contractorship offers and add items to that bill and push it through legislation. Other states have shown us, cities have shown us we can do this and you come out better, right? And, and Washington is, is, is a role model, is a role model for the rest of the country. In emails to drivers and customers on Monday night, obviously they were threatening passengers and drivers, 
Lawmakers released another pared-down version of the bill on Tuesday, but a lobbyist for Uber said the company believes it will still make rides more expensive than nearly anywhere else in the country. That's what they say, right? This is how they, they put the fear into riders. They did this very, very effectively in California, is that your rates will go through the roof if you don't support our bill. And the fact is, when the riders or the citizens fell for the BS campaigns, marketing campaigns, TV campaigns, they ended up paying way, way more down the line. So, um, you know, backing Uber and Lyft and DoorDash did not help them. It got actually got extremely expensive for these uh, citizens. Now, the bill would guarantee Uber and Lyft drivers minimum pay rates and protections against being fired or deactivated. I mean, what's wrong with that, right? If you have those type of protections built in. It seemed unlikely to pass this year until Senator Omar Fateh, a DFL Minneapolis, revived the effort last week and was able to get the bill back on track to reach the House and Senate floors before the end of the legislative session. And again, I'm asking, why wouldn't Republicans and Democrats support this bill, right? Why not? I mean, it's, it's, it's the basics, it's the minimums, and it's protection against deactivation. I mean, why would they not sign off on this? And if they don't, shame on them. We vote them out. So Fateh said his bill has the support of legislative leaders and a commitment from Governor Tim Waltz to sign it. But Waltz said he did not make a commitment to sign the bill, although he is supportive of its general aims when asked by an Axios reporter during an unrelated news conference on Tuesday. So I'm asking you, Governor Tim Waltz, why are you afraid to sign this? Right? Are you you getting uh, sponsorship dollars or, 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 or fund dollars for your campaign from Uber and Lyft? Like, what's, what's the truth there, my friend? Speak up. So the legislation aims to provide some benefits to Uber and Lyft drivers who, as independent contractors, aren't afforded the protections that employees have. Um, minimum wage, overtime, um, social security, unemployment, insurance and workers' compensation. Uber and Lyft drivers also won't be eligible for the various worker benefits. Um, the, legis the legislature is poised to pass this year, including paid sick days and family leave. Uber and Lyft drivers who have recently organized themselves in Minnesota under a new association have turned out in large numbers to committee hearings to show their support for the bill. My friends, you go in there and you show them you are willing to fight. You're willing to fight. If you show up there in the numbers, those legislators like, oh my God, here's all. I'm getting a lot of you, you bring them a lot of media attention and, and the, 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 the light is on them, right? They have to act now because otherwise they lose the support of all these people. Um, so in the emails to drivers, Uber said the legislation wouldn't just reduce their earnings, but leave them vulnerable to becoming employees rather than independent contractors. BS. Uh, in the email to drivers, Uber said the legislation wouldn't just reduce their earnings, but leave them. OK, I've said that many drivers say they like the freedom and flexibility uh, that being an independent contractor gives them. But they complain of having to shoulder more and more of the costs for gas, car payments and maintenance, while the companies claim an increasingly larger share of every fare. This is true. We know it. Now, they say the bill would ensure some financial predictability as well as critical protections from the whims of giant corporations. Drivers say the companies aren't transparent about compensation, and some say they have been kicked off the platform without any explanation. If you get kicked off the platform without any explanation, you go to Gig Rocket, right? I work with kick ass paralegals and attorneys, right? We take these guys on. And not only do we take them on to get you reactivated, but we also take them on for the lost earnings, right? We want you, we want to get that money back for you. So we hit them sort of like with a double whammy at Gig Rocket. So um, a spokesman for Uber says drivers do receive information on how much customers pay for each ride and drivers are always given a reason for deactivation. A spokesman, and that's not true. 
when they say drivers are always given a reason for deactivation. They will just say, oh, you committed fraud. Well, uh, excuse me, how did I commit fraud? Right. So it's not true. Uh, a spokesman for Lyft said drivers receive weekly earnings snapshot that says how much riders paid in total that week. The Lyft spokesman said drivers have the option of appealing deactivation decisions. Yes, through us, Gig Rocket, that is true. Uber told drivers it has proposed a compromise bill which would guarantee a pay rate of $1.15 per mile and 25 cents per minute while a passenger is in the vehicle. So basically only when they're driving a passenger in the vehicle. The bill's author, in-house um, representative Hoden Hassan, DFL Minneapolis, offered a new version of the bill on Tuesday with substantially reduced minimum pay rates. Under that version, drivers would be entitled to a $5 minimum fee, right? Why not start off with a $5 minimum? Why not? What's the problem there? I mean, in in Paris, they fought for $8.60, right? To me, one of the best models out there. Starting point, ladies and gentlemen, Paris, France, vive la France, oui, oui, $8.60. Here, they're only asking five bucks. And, and, and already, Uber's paying that $8.60 in Paris. So I have news for these drivers. Did they run away from Paris and threaten they're going to leave Paris over that? No, they didn't. They agreed. They're paying $8.60 minimum starting point. So you guys should fight for your $5 all day long. And so those threats are completely obsolete, right? If they have already agreed in Paris to an $8.60 minimum, right? It's about the same in euros, $8.50 or $8.60 euros. It's dollar euros about one to one. So did they abandon Paris? Did they threaten the drivers? Sure, but did they abandon Paris? No, they didn't. They adopted the minimum 860. So they will do the same for you. So no fear. Drivers have no fear in Minnesota. The Paris model proved that it's all talk, no action. Um, plus at least $1.45 per mile and 34 cents per minute in the seven county Twin Cities metropolitan area. Outside of the metro area, the minimum rate would be $1.25 per mile and 34 cents per minute. That's down from the original version, which required transportation network companies to pay drivers a minimum of 650 per ride. So again, that minimum of 650 per ride is already closer to that 860 that Paris achieved in Europe. Why can't we achieve the same here in the United States, my friends? Why are we too afraid to fight? Why are we too afraid to push? For more, people sell out too quickly. They don't have a reason to fight. They have no motivation to fight, right? If you want better life, if you want better conditions, sadly with big corporations, you have to fight for it. Um, so in the email, two riders, Uber said the legislation would limit the ability to keep dangerous drivers off the platform, including drivers accused of sexual assault, harassment, impaired driving and discrimination. Oh, that, that's how you threatening the riders, right? That legislation would limit, it'll limit our ability to keep dangerous riders off the platform. Have I ever heard a pile of shit as an excuse like this, right? Again, let me, let me read this. In the email to riders, you know, dear riders, oh, be afraid because Uber said the legislation will limit their ability to keep dangerous drivers off the platform. So you, you, that's how you talk about us, right? We're dangerous drivers, right? And uh, including drivers accused of sexual assault. Well, in, drivers accused of sexual assault shouldn't be on your platform in the first place. So why are you threatening drivers, right? That, you know, if you don't take action, there, there, there will be drivers who have sexual assault, um, harassment, impaired driving and discrimination records. Those people should not be on your platform in the first place. So why are you using this as a tool to threaten your riders? I, it doesn't make zero sense to me. Um, so that's in reference to a provision in the bill that aims to protect drivers against being unfairly deactivated. The bill would require transportation network companies to have clear rules around discipline 
and provide drivers with a written account of why they're being sanctioned or deactivated. A version of the bill passed by the Senate Judiciary Committee last week said drivers must have the opportunity to present their side of the story. We do that at gigrocket.com for you, right? The link is below. And appeal the company's decision before being activated or disciplined. Although companies would still be allowed to temporarily ban drivers for major infractions that endanger public safety. Now, temporarily ban drivers. You would think when you hear the word, you know, there's like a temporary ban. We, we're investigating this. This is the problem. Drivers sit and wait and sit and wait. That temporary is not just temporary. It takes forever, sometimes weeks or months. You know how much money you're losing? So they're like, oh, this will be temporary, temporarily resolved. We're looking into this. Uh, no, you're not. You have, you have so many false rider reports, so many wrongful deactivations, right, that you can't even keep up with your idiotic system, right? So nothing is temporary here. It's always long-term waiting, whether it's the background check, whether it's the wrongful deactivation. They are not motivated. They are not motivated to um, solve your issues, solve your problems. And that's why, sadly, sadly, a lot of the times we have to drag them into small claims court or arbitration, right? And spank them down, right? Because that's the only time they really wake up. So Uber says the requirements are too burdensome and could require them to track down victims of sexual assault or other harassment to have them testify hearings. Why is that too burdensome? A third sticking point in negotiations was a requirement that companies like Uber and Lyft provide additional insurance. That requirement is no longer in the bill. At one point, the bill would have required the company insure drivers up to one million in medical costs, which a lobbyist for Uber said is currently offered by, it isn't currently offered by any insurance company. Ed Ali, president of the newly formed Minnesota Uber Lyft Drivers Association. Um, I have dealt with them. I have supported them in their strikes, in their protests. Um, so th these are the type of people we need to support and work with. He said that the insurance provision was one of the most important aspects of the bill for drivers because many have been injured or attacked on the job. As independent contractors, they have to cover their own medical expenses and don't receive disability pay while recovering. That is true, because you'll just be left hanging with the hospital bill, hospital bills, uh, with the surgery bills, with the medical bills, with the medication bills. They ain't going to support you. You're on your own. It's unfortunate, Harley said. He said they knew they wouldn't get everything they wanted and are considering coming back next year to build on their momentum if it passes. Uh, the bill is scheduled to be heard on the House floor on Wednesday, right, today. So we will hear the outcome of that probably today. I guess this is all taking place right now. Maybe the day is already over. Uh, maybe, ah, maybe there is a press release. Maybe there's, there's information on this. So any driver knows the outcome of this. Text or email me immediately and leave your comments, please. Thank you.